Yes. Doing we're gonna, good, Debbie. Great. We're going to jump right in with our first guest. We're going to do a wrap up with um, Alan Osborne uh, with what we had talked about last week with Driftwood. So we're going to jump right into that. So Chaz, uh, what y'all got going on this morning? Well, I'll um, I'll hand it right over to Alan. So Alan, give us a synopsis of uh, your final comments on how um, on what you think about the situation at Driftwood. Well, I'll just go ahead and start off with the BCC meeting as we roll through that. First of all, the Driftwood thing is a planning issue. And we rolled right into the, you know, the fecal matter fell all upon the wind turbines the other day, and it was all over the BCC room, spread everywhere. It was obvious <laughs> on the face of the commissioners. It started off with a non-full support of Clay Atkinson, which is no shock, because that, that guy is – as conflicted as somebody looking at four bathroom signs. I mean, he just, he just shouldn't be in charge of the BCC. So after we roll into his pontification, we get to the subject of Larry. And Larry has on the schedule a reorganization of planning. Is that what Barker and them told him to do? No. They wanted an audit. And we were talking the words investigation. But look where this went. Larry's idea went over like somebody broke wind in the amen pew in the back of the church. Eric, nobody wanted to talk about it. It was awful. Everybody knew Larry stood there not knowing what to do, eating some humble sandwich, wondering how this had backfired. And the commissioners were in awe but said nothing. You know, it's like, uh, let's see, Larry single-handedly demoted people like he single-handedly created Stan's job when he came in there. I mean, Larry just does what he wants and always has. They call him the survivor because he survived the grand jury. No, he's surviving all, all our tax money. So we roll into that. Larry's, Larry's plan doesn't even get a, a motion. It dies. We go through the clay thing, and now here we are at Driftwood again. I am totally confused. So for weeks and months, I've heard rumors about the apocalypse volcano that the commissioners had had enough and they're going to do something so we wind up and i wait for the explosion and once again just a small sound from the back of the amen pew is about all that happens i'm waiting <laughs> for something to happen nothing happens boots even gets it and says let's do a moratorium mike and danny st stare forward like what you know, so it's just like it fell apart on. They wasn't going to have a discussion. Boots wanted to talk moratorium. Mike wanted to talk his audit. And Danny just wanted to stand there and go, uh-huh, and wait for them to do something because he never leads. He waits. He's got one foot on the issue on this side and one foot on the other. So let's go into what they're really going to do now. So now Clay Atkinson, who's, going, who's conflicted, is going to recommend to the county to pick another attorney because they don't understand what the words on the on the laws and the reports say. So let's go through who says that they're in conflict and not following the rules. Uh, the state DEO told them 16 years ago they weren't following the rules. Their engineer said they were. He's the only one. We go on to that. We go to a special master. The special master is a lawyer. And, and this is important. The special master is a lawyer in 2009, one of the most respected in the state, Carlos Alvarez. His answer to the board, go hire the best expert you can because he's an expert to interpret what that means. They do this. It takes them six years. They still continue to build, not knowing if they're in compliance, not knowing if they're doing the right thing, but they do it anyway. They get a report and the report starts reading now, they're so concerned about what the standard is, but, but they're missing this. The county's piping three miles of road runoff directly into the bay through 36-inch pipes. The county put like three or four of them in. Not the developer, the county on county land. They broke the rules. But here's what the rules say, and they're, and they're confused. And this said this in 1976. It said it in 84, and it says it now in the ordinance. The older practice of curbing roads and thus directing the runoff water into storm sewers to immediately carry the water into the bay will not be employed. 
What don't they understand? Will not. They need a lawyer to figure out what will not says. Really? <laughs> That's what we're going to get? It, it also says none of these categories will be dumped into the lake. Paragraph 19B, none. They don't understand the word none. The developer was asked this at one point. Here's what the water is supposed to do. Pass through a series of natural filters, grass, landscape, native areas, zones of shoreline plates, plants, and circulated through a series of internal lakes. McNeil said he didn't want that water in his lakes, so they dumped it in the bay to make him happy. That way he can build more. The developer was asked this question during the settlement in 1984. Question, what are the projected retention times for stormwater run runoffs? The developer's answer, within the lake system, the runoff system as shown in the DRI application to do this by the developer, the retention of runoff is predicated on three-year storm of 24 hours duration for a total of 6.7 inches of rainfall. Only storms of greater intensity can pass into the bay because that's what passed into it naturally. They're just not following the rules. In 2007, they got a letter that says this project is required to provide stormwater uh, retention for a 24-hour event of 6.7, and the stormwater facilities must be designed properly. It goes on to state what properly is of 19B in that settlement, that the lake should have a volume of runoff to be stored of the 24-hour design storm, and that the elevation above the normal lake elevation should be set at a 50-year storm to make sure it can't run over for that volume of water. The maximum discharge of a storm should not occur till the 50 year design. Why don't they understand this? Because the state doesn't agree with what they're doing, says they're in violation. They're not using the right standard. The Florida Board of Professional Engineers said that. They spent four, God knows, over a million dollars installing a non compliant system and charged the residents three million to put another non-compliant system in. But the best part of all is the only, look, they got four engineers, but they won't call them up in a public meeting and say, is it compliant? Put your engineer stamp on it. They won't do it because here's Greg Graham's own words in this 19 February letter to the BCC that Sydney says she never gave this letter to the BCC because Greg wrote this paper just as a response to Suzanne Harris's public records request. How that makes sense on Sesame Street is beyond me. But here's what Greg says. Greg says himself, their own engineer's word says that he agrees with, I'm going to read this to you. He agrees with Dr. Harper's calculations. So what are they trying to figure out? He says, I agree with Dr. Harper's hydraulical analysis that was performed to arrive at the runoff volumes as calculated per, per the original methodology outlined in the Sandestin DRI. Dr. Harper said Greg didn't even know how to set up a model. Go read the 2015 report. He modeled that like a nude model wears clothes. It, it doesn't work. <laughs> All the numbers were wrong. He put in the numbers in the model to arrive at the answer he wanted, just like Charlie Cotton and Chance Powell. I'm telling you two engineers, you went down and lied to Dr. Harper, boys, and I'm going to call you out. You didn't tell him that Bignell had to take the water into the lake. You gave him a solution where he had to dump it in the bay or dump it in somebody's house. And the final thing, let's go over the, how many minutes I got left? Let's go over law. Danny keeps saying there's nobody to tell. Danny, you're the person to tell because the law says 380.0617. The local government is primarily responsible for enforcing the law. So when you guys look around for somebody to tell, tell the people in the mirror to do the right thing. That's who you're waiting on. The state's waiting on you to tell them. Everybody is. The local government under the law, this is not Alan's words, shall not issue any permits or approvals or provide any extension of services if the developer acts to substantial compliance. Folks, there's a trickle-down effect. Traffic is out of compliance in Sandestin, 
and tw almost 24% of sand dust in the block G of driftwood is being shoveled out Mac Bayou Road. The traffic count doesn't indicate that. So those three developments that the commissioners approved in the past year, they probably didn't have the traffic count because they've never counted sand dust improperly. And those developments that PUD probably owed massive money for propor proportional fair share. But because the traffic counts a lie, it has a trickle down to the next neighborhood. So that means they approve those neighborhoods with the improper traffic count from Sandestin. There is no way out of Driftwood Block G of Sandestin except Mac Bayou Road. That's it. And, you know, mm -hmm. do you think all the traffic at Grand Boulevard that nine, nine out of 10 cars come out of Sandestin? That's what the traffic thing says. That crap was wrote in the 80s when there was nothing <coughs> You know, I'm going right. to go into the other things that's wrong that happened there. Who's running this county? Supposedly, the HR, listen, the good old boy placement of people, just like how Matt got hired, Sydney was Mark's cousin. That was her qualification as an attorney. Okay. I, I understand Tony Corman was going to be the chief of code and report directly for the board. Evidently, he reports to Stan Sunday, and Stan tells him and others to close out just like Matt did code complaints and Stan I guess told Tony he had to hire his executive assistant what I'm hearing some lady named Hicks who broke the law at the sheriff's department and shot a shot a fake deer you can't make this up Tony works for the board supposedly some lady named Kelly Schultz who was in trouble at the or had a personal improvement plan she's now been recycled back to the county and Larry was trying to bring Wayne Dias. Wayne Dias, the old planning director who screwed up Sandestin. Supposedly he's walking around planning, handing out cookies, saying, I'm coming back. The commissioners didn't know. <laughs> I wonder what they thought of that. They didn't I mean, like it. They yeah, did not I mean, like it. You, you can't make this stuff up. Old Larry John used to give this speech. And I know we're about to go to a break. He'd say, well... I'm glad I ain't the man I used to be. Well, Larry, you're still not good enough because lying about the law, wasting taxpayers' money, and running the hiring and firing around here through the good old bully and DNA system, we've had enough. These commissioners are wasting money. We've now go back to get a lawyer to tell us what the lawyer told us to get the engineer to listen to. It's this vicious circle while we continue to build you think those banks and those investors lending all this 500, they fired a lady over a $3,000 dental fraud. Y'all remember that in HR? She filled out her insurance paperwork and defrauded them out of three or $4,000. But the right. county staff can sign off certificates of occupancy for half a billion dollars in loans and nobody flinches. Folks, we have a problem. Big deal. Commissioners, get it together. Have I got any time left? Yeah, well, well, Alan, I, I want to address something that did happen at the at the meeting with uh, Danny Glidewell, uh, and I believe Tony, even did, Tony uh, Anderson, did speak up and ask Clay Atkinson, is there an emergency that we can, is there some way we can say there's an emergency? You're, you're right. How rare is that, Debbie? I agree with you. Tony never says crap except motion to approve and here he is fighting and that, hey folks he says that he also asked for uh, bathroom breaks too that's exactly yeah. well but, it's, but the point was even tony knew that they'd already paid harper the lawyer told him to hire harper they picked harper i didn't pick him they picked him the Florida Board of Engineers said everything Harper said was right, and Greg Graham said it was right, but Sidney and Larry, who were on the memo, they didn't give it to the BCC because it said something they didn't want the BCC to know. We play hide the information in Walton County. Folks, we need some sunshine on our laws around here because we've wasted enough money on DNA and covering stuff up that we could have probably bought 5,000 feet of public beach and enough parking to make us all happy. We need to do something, commissioners. If you want to know about Sandestin, ask me. I'll give you a class for free. I'll bring the paperwork for free. I'll answer all the questions. Dana Matthews, bring that little whatever he is with you that stands up there, that new attorney. Steven, 
Dell Stephen to get up here and really debate this with me. Bring back Nell. Bring a stool for him to stand on, and we'll have a debate on what the law is and why the taxpayer shouldn't be paying for him to make money while he breaks the law and pollutes our bay. That reorganization of the of the San Destin HOA, all you rich people, you don't get to dump water in the bay because Beck Nell can take you out to eat. I don't care. Well, I don't let me care. Say, Alan, Alan, let me say this. Yeah. Clay Agson got up there at, acting as county attorney and said he doesn't see an emergency. Sure. Well, I think our water quality in South Walton is an emergency. That Absolutely. Having Clay in charge of anything is an emergency. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that this could have been declared an emergency because of water quality issues in South Walton. And they could have issued a stop order on any development. They've in already done it before. They've done it before, but they said they were in compliance and lifted it. And clearly they aren't, Debbie. And also, yeah. they could declare safety for the flooded entrance at Driftwood. The emergency exit, the entrance was flooded. And we've got, got commissioners go to the Driftwood group and watch the emergency, watch the safety issues. You don't want to see it. That's why you won't come out here with me, commissioners. Danny, you are in charge. Well, Alan, we thank you for coming back and wrapping this up for us. And we're going to go to a y'all want to run down, Debbie, on what really happened versus what Larry and the staff said happened. I am happy to bring these documents, show up at hearings, come to workshops. Let's do it. Well, there, there is a problem with what the administration and staff brings to the commissioners and what the commissioners, that's what the commissioners depend on and what they're getting. <laughs> is not always what should be presented.